Hello everyone and welcome to the part 2 video presentation series of basic principles of laparoscopic surgery. The work is catered to MRCS candidates and junior trainees who may find this helpful. There are no conflict of interests and all videos were made for educational purposes only. These are the learning objectives which will serve as a guide and introduction to the basic knowledge of laparoscopic surgery. In today's video presentation, we will be covering the remaining learning objectives that have not been covered in the previous presentation. Maintenance of a clear, sharp image is the key to a safe laparoscopic surgery. The light source is transmitted to the laparoscope via a fiber optic cable and the light source can cause serious burns quickly. It is crucial that the light source shall not come into contact with the patient or the drape when it is on to prevent thermal injury. Hence, it is advisable to switch on the light source only after it has been connected to the laparoscope. Camera fog itself can be very disruptive to the flow of the surgery. It is caused by water condensation on the cold lens when it first enters a relatively warm intra-abdominal environment. Warm water and anti-fog agents can help to reduce this condensation. Generally, a bigger scope diameter provides a better image view, though smaller diameter scope continues to improve. Next, the angulation of the scope differs between 0 and 30 degrees. The 30 degree scope has the advantage for better view from a variety of angles. This is particularly helpful when working in a confined space such as during the abdominal perineal resection of the rectum procedure in the pelvic region where often good views are otherwise challenging to achieve. Hence, a 30 degree scope is a preferred scope of choice for a majority of laparoscopic surgeons. An external camera is mounted on the laparoscope and feeds the image onto the high definition monitor. The screen should always be placed in at appropriate height and in the direction of the line of operating as shown in the diagram. We have discussed the different techniques of port insertion in the previous video presentation, but I would like to bring the focus today to a few principles of port insertion. Factors that will improve the laparoscopic surgery during port placement are applying the principles of triangulation between instruments and target tissues, important anatomical landmarks and organs, optimal distance in between ports and target tissues, as well as insertion techniques that we have discussed. All these principles should be applied and adapted on a case-by-case -case basis. This diagram illustrates the concept of triangulation during port placement in laparoscopic surgery. Following establishment of pneumoperitoneum and first port insertion, additional ports are then inserted to allow instrumentation. Size of the additional ports are guided by the surgery and the type of instruments used, but ranging between 5 to 10 mm of diameter, and they are inserted under direct vision. A recommended approach of local anesthetic infiltration at the desired port insertion site will help to identify the correct position when the injected area swells up and they are introduced away from the pertinent structures such as the previously mentioned inferior epigastric vessels. The urinary bladder is the other organ that is at risk of injury during suprapubic port placement. Hence, preoperative 
urinary catheterization can be helpful in avoiding iatrogenic bladder injury. In conclusion, port positions should be determined carefully that maximizes safety and efficacy during the insertion process, as well as during the surgery. And this should be determined on a case-by-case -case basis by bearing in mind the modifiable factors such as anatomy and pathology like adhesions, and lastly, the type of laparoscopic surgery performed. I hope everyone has enjoyed the second part of this video presentation. Our next and final part of this video presentation series will cover the appropriate use of laparoscopic instruments, limitations of laparoscopic surgery, and abdominal wall closure post-operatively. Thank you very much and follow along the playlist for part 1 and 3 if desired and feel free to browse the remaining video presentations covering a variety of MRCS topics and your feedback is much appreciated.